There's new information tonight about the controversial fatal shooting of an Overland Park teen by a police officer. Now, responding to a welfare check on 17-year-old John Albers, Officer Clayton Jennison fired 13 shots as Albers was backing the minivan out of the garage. The I-Team's Andy Alcock is joining us with some new information about the case. Andy, what did you learn? Well, Dee, in January, 41 Action News filed a lawsuit against the city of Overland Park. The suit was to get the Johnson County Officer-Involved Shooting Investigation Team, or OSIT, report on the fatal shooting. While we still don't have the OSIT report, the newly released city response to our suit contradicts previous public statements made about the case. Video captured then Officer Clayton Jennison pulling his service weapon out of his holster before the garage door is fully open and 17-year-old John Elber starts backing up the family minivan. In response to a 41 Action News lawsuit to get more information in the case, the city now admits Jennison never identified himself as a police officer to John Elber's or even told him to stop the car before fatally shooting the teen. Yet remarkably, Frank Donchez, the chief of police, says that Jennison followed policy. That kind of statement makes Barney Fife look like Albert Einstein. Any other scenario, the officer would have been fired and his license would have been revoked. And that did not happen. At a news conference a month after the shooting, Johnson County District Attorney Steve Howe announced Jennison would not be charged with a crime. In what Howe called a fact sheet, he claimed Jennison was directly behind the vehicle and feared he would be run over. Based on the evidence that we have available, that that was a reasonable belief. The city admits that many of the statements that Steve Howe gave in the press conference in which he exonerated Jennison are just flat out falsehoods. 41 Action News attorney Bernie Rhodes also notes the city's response now confirms there's audio of Jennison during the incident, which had not been previously revealed or publicly released. The fact that there is audio of Jennison the night he killed my son and the public has not heard it is shameful. City leaders in their lawsuit response also claim they don't know if there's enough public interest in the case to release the OSIT report. However, Rhodes points out the city has received 15,000 emails from the community with either John or his mother Sheila Albers name on it. Rhodes says the city is sticking its head in the sand. Ostriches around the world are shaking their head at this. The city is also claiming because there's an open federal civil rights investigation of this case, the OSIT report should not be released. Sheila Albers calls the claim an excuse. Rhodes calls it absurd. A status conference for the lawsuit is scheduled for next Tuesday. I'm investigator Andy Alcock, 41 Action News.